Let's dive right into example 7. Uh, this example looks like a game, and almost is one. It reminds me of something like Space Invaders or Centipede. I'm going to explain this program line by line instead of following the flow, because if I went through each step of each go sub and 4-2, we would never finish this video. Uh, let's start with the three arrays, EX, EY, and ED. EX and EY are the enemy's X and Y positions. The uh, ED array says what direction each enemy should be moving and whether or not that enemy has been shot dead and shouldn't be moving. The 4-2 statement prints two rows of ten enemies on the screen. After that we print the player's ship on the screen and set some variables that I'll explain those whenever we get to them. Now for the most important part of the program, the loop. It's pretty self-explanatory and the names of the labels give you a good idea of the flow of this program. Uh, let's look at the at score section. They teach an important lesson here about making uh, local and global variables. Uh, I use these names because they resemble something uh, like what you use in C++. The point I'm trying to get at is that they store whether or not they even want to add to the score in uh, SV, then check SV before actually adding to the score. Sometimes when passing around variables, they can get funny or incorrect values in them pretty easily. It's hard to explain, but it's just good practice to have backup variables that uh, check each other and make sure that your program is running smoothly. Next, we have the at ship section. As you can guess, this moves the ship. We don't tie the buttons directly to PX and PY. Instead, we use the VX to store either a negative 1 or a 1 in and, and just add VX to PX. Remember that uh, adding a positive number to a negative 1 is the same as subtracting a 1. If you've watched all of the example program videos up to this point, it should be starting to click with you uh, how these basic programming techniques blend together to make games. How about shooting? Uh, no point in having enemies if you can't shoot them. After the at my shot label, you see it uh, asks if a variable called MST is set to true. This is the program checking to see if a shot has already been fired. If so, then it goes to MS move, MS move to, and finally to MS skip. I'll explain this in a second. Uh, next, it asks another if, if button 16 or 32 equals zero. In other words, hasn't been pressed. Then uh, go to MS skip. Now uh, we get to the else. Else set MST equal to true. Set the X and Y for the shot to wherever the player is currently at and move MS move to to uh, print the shot and send it on its way. We see MS move is just locating MX and MY, the shot coordinates, and printing a blank space. Why print a blank? Uh, this is so we can cover up the old shot location, of course. We don't want the ship to just paint permanent lines all over the screen. MS move 2 moves the MY location up 1 by subtracting 1 from the Y coordinate, then says if MY is less than 0, in other words, off the screen, then set MST to false because the shot is over and uh, go to MS skip. Else go ahead and print the shot at MX and MY. MS skip is pretty self explanatory. It returns back to where it was go subbed. Okay, so we got our ship. It can move and shoot. We got enemies, but they can't move or even die. Let's fix that. We start off the uh, alien label by declaring a variable called md and setting it to false. This is where we're going to uh, pass off our edw variable. edw is how we tell our enemies that they have reached the edge and they need to move on. Now we say if edw is true, then set md to true as well, and then set edw back to false so that it can go and do its job again later. Now we start a 4-2 is going to ask a few ifs inside. The first if checks if any of the data in the ED array is negative 1. Remember that ED stores the uh, enemy direction, but in this case we're checking if any of the enemies are dead. 
So if any of the slots in the ED array equal negative one, we aren't even going to uh, print an enemy or move them or anything. They're dead. So we're just going to go to at pass, then return to the four to check the next slot on ED. Okay, back on track. What if this enemy hasn't died yet? We need to print a blank where they are now so we can print a new enemy in the place that they're supposed to move. Now if MD equals false, meaning that if they don't need to be told what direction to move in, then go ahead and send them to the labels below that move them. Else, if they do need to be told, then uh, we're going to change the value stored in ED. We do this by adding 1 to whatever is stored in ED and then adding the value to 3. If you don't know what I mean by ending, then please watch my videos on uh, binary and ending. Let's take a look at at skip for a second. These three nested ifs basically check if your shot has hit one of the aliens. If not, then it goes to at pass. But if so, then it will start off by printing a blank where they used to be. Then it will set the enemy's shot in the ED array to negative one so that we know it's dead and uh, then we can check later. Then it'll set MST to false so that the shot doesn't keep going and kill all the enemies above the one that got shot. Then we add 10 points to SV, which adds to the, our score. Now let's get to the last part, the enemy's actual movement. Looking at the at emove label, you can see on ED in parentheses I, the, you know, the array, go to four different labels. The on command was used in one of our sample programs with a variable called mark. This time it's just using the ED array slot to read the direction number and go to the proper loop based on that number. As you can see, down is put twice. That's because you want the enemy to move all the way right, move down, then move all the way left, and move down again. Taking a look at any of these labels that make the actual movement, you should be able to figure out what they do. They increment EY or EX of the enemy, make sure that they aren't moving off the screen, and uh, on the downward one you change the ED. Uh, on left and right you just set EDW to true once they reach the edge so that our 4-2 knows what's up and can handle it from there. Hopefully this was all pretty straightforward. It helps to just print out all the code and write notes. Uh, you want to get used to following along with the flow of code because uh, we're going to be looking at some longer and longer programs, especially whenever we get to the sample games.